Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday again, Wednesday professional development here at Transformation Through Acquisition Driven Instruction. You're a digital a professional learning community. I'm so glad you are joining us. I am super excited. Every Wednesday is just excitement for me. I mean, it's it's marvelous that I get to learn from amazing people throughout the entire nation on all kinds of topics. So I'm really excited today to introduce you to Heidi, but before I introduce you to Heidi, I just want to introduce myself again uh, because every week we get new people. So again, I'm Berta Delgadillo and I am a high school Spanish teacher in Savannah, Georgia. And I have created this space to invite you to learn and to grow together as teachers. And, and you know, just to be there for each other, whatever is coming our way, we are teachers, we, we will make it through and we will do the best that we can with the situations thrown at us. I mean, that's just what we do. And we're so grateful. I'm so grateful for this beautiful community and for people like Heidi, who, you know, when you reach out to them, they say, yes, I'm there. I'm there to support teachers. So I am going to go ahead and uh, let Heidi introduce herself and tell us a little bit about, you know, what's happening today. I mean, I'm excited about the topic because it is a topic that is so meaningful to me. I love to bring the community to my classes. And because I'm going to be going virtual, that's not going to be possible. I'm not going to be able to have a food truck in my classroom or outside the school, actually not in my classroom. I'm not going to be able to bring, you know, a heritage speaker to tell my class how to make tortillas. I'm not going to be able to do all of that because of all the COVID, um, you know, school closings and, and all of this that's happening. But Heidi is going to tell us how she does it. And she's been doing this even before school closures. So we're learning from the best of the best. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to Heidi so she can introduce herself. Hey, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? I hope you're all good. You can put it in the chat. So I am Heidi Trude. I am a French teacher at Loudoun Valley High School up in Percival, Virginia. So if you're not familiar with the geography, of Virginia, that's Northern Virginia. If you've ever flown into Dulles Airport, my school is not too far from our big international airport. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you all. So just bear with us for a minute. And there we go. Okay, there we go. And you guys should be seeing my screen. There we go. All right, so now we all can see it. If you, for some reason you can't, if you just put it in the chat and Bertha will let me know. All right, so tonight we are gonna focus on making the global connection, which this is something I'm extremely passionate about. As Bertha told you, I've been doing this before COVID. I've actually been doing this since 2012, parts of this present, parts of what you'll see tonight, some of it more recently. So we're just going to dive in. And if you have questions at any time, feel free to put them in the chat and I will answer them as you guys put them in there. So hopefully this is going to advance. Let's go. Okay, we're there we go. All right. So. A little bit more about me, just my contact info. If you need to reach out to me at any time, feel free to do so. Like I said, I'm a French teacher. Been doing this, I'll be entering my 13th year of teaching. This will be my second year at Valley. I taught the previous years out in Front Royal at Skyland High School. I'm your 2018 Sculpt Teacher of the Year, 2019 Actual Teacher of the Year finalist, President-elect of Flava. So that's just a little who I am. And if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out on my email, which is techytrude at gmail.com. You can reach out on Twitter. Feel free to tweet during this presentation as well. That's totally fine. Twitter handle is htrude07. And I've also linked my website here, which is it's, the title is Tech with Trude. And you can just, I'll give you the bit.ly link so you can go there. It's a wealth of resources for technology integration in the world language classroom. So. Feel free in your free time, peruse around. You'll find something I'm sure that you can bring back to your classes, whether virtual, hybrid, in person, whatever situation you may be facing in the fall. All right. So, tonight's presentation, I did make a bit.ly and I will share it with Bertha at the end of the presentation so she can put it up in the group for you all as well. But it's just bit.ly global connect 2020 and it is case sensitive so it's a capital g and a capital c so bit.ly 
bit.ly global connect 2020 and that will give you access to the presentation and all the gifts that i have thrown into this for you guys i'm giving you yes, all the you you are notorious for bringing gifts in every presentation you go to <laughs> yes. so you guys will get all my templates that i use lots of examples that you can modify for your language so just take them change them adapt them to any level you get it all so just make a copy and it's all yours all right so our goals and objectives for this evening I can create opportunities for my students to connect with native speakers through a variety of online platforms. And our other goal will be that I can use various strategies to keep my students immersed in the target language while connecting with native speakers. So pretty big goals, but we can accomplish these. And I think by the end tonight, you guys will have leave with several strategies that you'll feel very comfortable using that you could even try out yourself tomorrow. So here we go. All right. Our first area, and I've kind of divided this into four areas that we'll explore tonight. This one's probably the coolest, and this is probably the one, if you ask my students, this one's probably one of their favorites. So we're going to look at doing a mystery Skype or a mystery Hangout. Again, depends on your platform. You could also use Zoom. I didn't put Zoom there, but if that's your platform that your district says you're using, you could do a mystery Zoom. You could do a mystery Google Meet. You could do a mystery WebEx if you wanted, whatever you're using as that online platform, you can use that. So basically our goal is connecting our students to native speakers around the world. So the challenge that we face every day as language educators is we want to connect our students with, our, with native speakers. And it's like, as Bertha mentioned in her intro, how are we going to do this when we're teaching from our homes? We can't bring those people that we would normally bring into our classrooms. We can't take our students somewhere to meet and interact with those native speakers. So how do we do this? It's a big challenge because we want them to communicate in the target language as much, much as possible and we want them having those authentic experiences. So what are we going to do? So luckily I had the great pleasure during our FLAVA conference and I'm on our board. So I was very fortunate to get to spend a lot of time with our keynote speaker who was Mr. Akash Patel. So I got to meet him. Oh, I met him at ACTVAL when I was ACTVAL TOY nominee and he was receiving the innovation award. So I met him there and then that's when we made the ask for him to come to FLAVA and speak as our keynote. So that was back in October, 2019. So it was there I learned about his foundation and that was what really gave me the opening kind of, so to speak, of how I could really open the door even more than I already had for my students. So the solution was through Akasha's foundation, which is the Happy World Foundation, and I will give you guys all the contact info to reach out and you can literally start emailing him after this presentation and he will start connecting you and setting things up. And and can I interrupt you for a second? I, I, I want to give a big shout out to Samantha Page. I know she's listening and I know she's super excited because, you know, it was thanks to Samantha Page who saw uh, his presentation on Mafla, I think. And, you know, you commented on it and you say, oh, yeah, I've been using this for, for a while and I'm so familiar with it. And I said, OK, well, let's do it. So thank you uh, to Samantha for, uh, you know, mentioning it. And thank you, Heidi, for just your willingness to just jump Absolutely. in. Absolutely. My pleasure. So. so, yeah. So if you have not had the pleasure of hearing Akash, please hear him at some point. I know those webinar recordings are available on the website on Avant's page. So check those out as well. Mm -hmm. But so I got to hear Akash and it was through his talk that I was like, oh, my gosh, I literally he showed us how to do it we participated right then and there i mean he had a room full of teachers like all of us engaged we like felt like we were school kids like right back in there diving right in to this and it was so fun like oh my gosh i had fun doing it and then i was like the kids are gonna love this so the solution is that we connect the students to those native speakers of our target language whether it's french spanish german etc chinese japanese etc through these mystery Skypes or Hangouts using his Global Connect program through the Happy World Foundation. And now you're probably wondering, you're like, Heidi, there's probably a fee for this. Nope, there is no fee. It is all free. Oh, wow. Yes, completely free. 
So it's a free program. You literally, all you have to do is you're going to send. So how does it work? Simple. You just reach out to Akash and I will give you his contact info. I think I put it on the next slide. So you reach out. He will connect you. He'll ask you, you know, what do you teach or what language, what level? And he will connect you and your students with a native speaker from around the world in that country. So some of the languages are a little limited. Spanish, he has tons of volunteers. So you could have someone in Spain. You could have someone in South America. You could even specify, like, I'm working on this unit. Do you have someone who is a doctor? Like, maybe you were in the medical chapter and you want them to actually talk with, like, a medical professional who's in that target language. Like, my friend did it. Wow, that's the specific. Actually, yes. The doctor actually took them on a tour of the hospital there. That's in incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. So he'll connect you. And what he does is he'll give you that individual's name and their contact info as well as their availability for the week. So then it's up to you to reach out and be like, Akash has given me your name through the Global Connect program. I'm a teacher and I would like to set up a hangout this week. When would be a good time for you? And then you and that individual work out the details and you decide like, okay, do you want to do this, that, the other thing? Like you set it up to however you want it to be and I'll explain a little more with it, but oh my gosh, the kids love it, like love it. So here's his contact. So I'll put the, I'll leave that up there for a second so everyone can write it down, but don't worry, you are getting a copy of it. So you'll have it and you can literally, I hyperlinked it so you can literally just click it. Click. <laughs> and it'll send you the mail right there to him. It's I, well, I wonder if Akash is ready for all these people who are watching to get I all those I probably movies. should have warned him ahead of time. I'll text him <laughs> as soon as we're done. Yes, he will give you his personal cell phone number. He probably wouldn't have cared if I would have put it on here. But I just didn't want to do that to him. But just email him and he will set it up and he'll be like, okay, he'll probably even start matching you now if you want to do just a trial run at your house just to see how it works. <laughs> oh my goodness. So he has volunteers that are just waiting like, waiting they love this like i'll show you some pictures of my class and talk about the volunteers like they're amazing and the kids love it like and the volunteers love it and they'll like we almost missed lunch one block because they got so engaged and i'm like that's our bell guys and they're like we don't want to go madame it's still like we're still talking to them and i'm like okay <laughs> if you want to miss lunch we can keep talking or go get your food and if they're willing to stay you can eat in my room it's fine like i don't care you're using the target language keep going like i can eat my food later because it's the like i had planning the last block of the day so it didn't bother me but the kids literally they ran to the cafeteria got their food and they came back and they kept wow. talking in french yeah so it's that cool so hopefully this has given everyone a time to write down the contact, but again, you'll get the presentation. It will be hyperlinked there. You literally hover over his name and it's already showing you on mine, mail to Akash. And it will literally just send the email or you could even tell him my school's starting in August. I'm starting in September. I'd like to bring someone in the first week. Can you set this up? And he'll tell you yes and be like, what language, what level, and you'll be good to go. His website is there and it tells you all about the foundation and everything that he does. He's also a teacher full time too. Yes, uh, Samantha said that he teaches Spanish in Oklahoma. And uh, I'm just gonna answer a question really quickly. Yeah. Uh, someone is asking if the session is gonna be recorded. Uh, yes, the session will be available on, on the document where we house all the sessions. Um, and I probably won't get to put it in there until maybe nine o'clock today, but it will be there so people can watch if they have to go for any reason, which we hope you don't have to. So you can see it live and ask your questions. But if you do, it'll be there. Yeah. And if you have questions even after tonight, guys, don't hesitate to reach out to me as well. So no worries. We got everybody. So that's his contact. So then what does this look like? So once you've made that contact, now it's up to you to run it in your classroom. So these are just some of my strategies that I use when I run the mystery hangout. So we play it like a game. So basically, you're going to lead what I start out with is I lead my kids through a brainstorming activity first to help them kind of determine what kind of questions should we create. So their goal is they 
I don't tell them. They don't know ahead of time where the speaker is coming from. They don't know. I'll tell them if it's male or female just to help them in creating their questions. So I'll tell them, you know, class today, we have a guest coming to us from wherever this person, he or she, you know, that I'll tell them their name so they can greet them when the person pops on the screen, but they know nothing else. They don't know what they do. They don't know where they live. They know nothing. They just know a name and that's pretty much it. So then I lead them through an activity to ask them what kind of questions should we create? So if they know the goal is we're trying to figure out where this individual lives, I'm like, now what would be some good questions to ask or topics? And they're like, sometimes they sit there, it takes them a minute. And then we start generating a list on the board. Like, should we ask questions about geography maybe? And they're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Should we ask about foods? Maybe that could give us a clue. Should we ask about clothing? Like what do they wear there? Or what kinds of music, things like that. Or they ask, do you have a sports team in your town? Like a major sports team? Do you live near a river? Do you live in a big city? Things like that. Sometimes they'll ask them even, do you use the Metro? Do you walk to get to your work? Like different questions just to kind of Sometimes you have to kind of scaffold it and lead the kids through this part. Some of them, your upper levels will have no problem probably thinking of these questions, but I found my novice learners, that was more, they weren't sure where to go. So I have a template that I'll share with you guys that gives you kind of a scaffolded sheet that the kids can hold in front of them to help them form those questions. And again, I remind them, ask a yes or a no, like, don't ask something that's going to lead them to give you more. You just want a simple yes or no. And then we go over, is this a good question? What's not so good? So I give them examples as we go along, like, and that helps them. So that's the brainstorm phase. So then after they've brainstormed, then they go off, they create their, they prepare their questions. Sometimes we do this in class. Sometimes I ask them to prepare it as homework and then they'll do it the next day. Before we actually do the hangout, I give the kids time to practice asking questions to their classmates. So it kind of lets them rehearse it so they don't feel as nervous and kind of lowers their effective filters as well, that they're practicing it with their partner. Their partner pretends that they're the mystery guest. And just giving them that little bit of preparation really helps them feel more comfortable because I'm like, to them, some of them, they feel scared. It's a little scary and intimidating when someone pops up on the big screen that they don't know and they're being told it's a native speaker. And some of them are like, uh, deer in the headlights. And others are like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And they like just are all over it. But if they have that practice time, I found it really helps them just to prepare and feel more comfortable going into it. So that's a big tip that I really like that one. Then after we practiced and we prepared, so on the day of the hangout, I would introduce the guest to the class, tell them who it is. Okay, this is Edrin. And class, your goal is to figure out where does Edrin live? And they're like, okay. And then she'll usually greet, he or she will greet the class. And the class usually they greet back and then we jump right in. So we start the game and they take turns asking their yes or no questions. And then I also give, they have their question sheets and they're listening carefully as this is going on. They're listening to what their classmates ask and writing down answers to the questions. So some of them may have the same question. So someone might ask, do you live near the ocean? And if someone had a simple, similar question, like they would still mark down the answer on their sheet, like yes or no, we or no, in my case. And then that way their speaker won't get the same question asked like five times because Johnny wasn't paying attention when Susie asked the question. <laughs> I'm like, I feel bad for the speaker if they have to hear, do you yeah. live near the ocean five times in a row? And I'm just yeah. like, pay attention. That's why you write it down, cross it off, whatever system works for the kids. So they know, okay, that's been asked already. Maybe I didn't catch it, but Hey, my partner sitting next to me is nudging me, telling me that one was asked, mark it off. Yeah. Cause they would never do it. Right. Heidi, they would never do it. Never. <laughs> no, so they Wait, learn. 
we have a, a, a quick okay. question. Go for it. Um, I think this is from Elaine. Uh, she's asking, okay. do you get a mystery guest for each period? Okay, so sometimes I switch them up. Sometimes I don't do it with every class. So I might keep the same speaker that day, but I might not do it with every class. Sometimes it depends on their level. Not their level, sorry. The speaker's availability. Mm -hmm. They might only, and especially in my case with France, with the time difference, that makes yeah. it a challenge because they're six hours ahead of me. So I'm like, sometimes it works that my morning classes get someone, but my afternoon doesn't. So I try to vary it up and I tell Akash, hey, I need someone who might be available at this time. And the cool part is sometimes he has native speakers who are here in the U.S. that are like studying abroad over here. And that really throws the kids off because they're like, they sound exactly like a native speaker, but then they're not saying yes to the <laughs> questions that we think they're in France. Or then the kids start thinking the, pre the speakers in Canada. And then one time we had a speaker, she was actually in Atlanta, but she was a native French speaker. And it like totally threw them because she was here studying in Atlanta. So that threw my kids for a loop. That's incredible. That we had so one funny. another time she was studying up in Philadelphia and was a Fulbright scholar studying in Philly. And that one threw the kids off too. <laughs> yeah, like they get thrown off sometimes or they think... <laughs> Like they start judging and thinking, well, oh yeah, they're going to be from here or there. And like it blows the kids' minds. But then the cool part is they will tell the kids about their home country and what it's like. So that's like after the game. So you keep playing the game. And then I step in if I need to, like especially for my level twos, sometimes the threes. If I need to step in, I will step in and assist them with the language. But pretty so much it, it depends it. on the and it depends basically on the availability yes, of on the availability of the speaker, speaker. And, and, and then samantha page is asking do you need parent permissions for kids to be on camera or in our district yes but they handle that all at the beginning of the school year with a paper like our district's really good about that so yes if the kids are going to be on camera absolutely but check with your school and your district yeah always check with the school and the district that's, I, mean, that's I know good. what my district's rules are but i can't say like what bartha's district's rules are uh -huh. and, so, and do, you, do you work with one native speaker all year or you can work with different ones you can work with different ones you can switch it up like i've in all our mystery calls we've usually we do different ones but then sometimes i'll be like Once you have their contact, you can just reach out to that person on your own and be like, hey, could we just have a follow up with you this week? Or could you chat with my kids this week on a topic like my one friend who's a Spanish teacher? She would make the connections and then she would usually pair one person up with that class just and kept that one person. Okay, so, so there's a lot of flexibility. Lots of flexibility with this. Like it's all how you want to structure it. I like the game aspect of it because mm -hmm. I'm yeah, competitive. I, I, I definitely. I'm competitive and good. I like to turn it into a game with the kids. So I'll keep telling you how it works. So then I would step in and assist. I also invite my admin in when we do these. Like, that's a great way for them to see your kids using the language mm -hmm. and to see something really cool and different. So you'll see I have some pictures coming up and my admin come in and participate. My district supervisors and curriculum specialists come in and watch and play along. Like we make it a whole production. Like everybody oh, wow. plays. I am super excited. So then what would happen is the students and the speaker engage in, we call it the game. We usually make that part last about 10 to 15 minutes. By that time, if they haven't figured it out, The speaker will then tell them or they'll give them hints. Like one of the times a speaker pulled out a flag to help the kids. So that's like they'll give them hints along the way. Or sometimes the speakers will slip up and they'll accidentally say where they're from. They don't mean to, but it sometimes it just happens. And sometimes the kids catch it. Sometimes they don't. <laughs> I'll catch it. And I just usually play along and pretend I didn't hear that at all. So that's one way. So it happens. And then after they've guessed, if they get it right or they don't, it's still okay. After the game ends, the speaker will then share a lesson because you've already talked with the speaker ahead of time about either a cultural topic, they'll share about their home country, or one of the times one of our guests shared, we were doing an art unit and they created 
an actual presentation all about art in their home country. So that was really, really cool. The kids liked that one. I'll, some of the times they'll just talk about stuff, like whatever you want. Sometimes the kids want to know about schooling, food is popular. My kids were all into like music as well. So they would talk about that. And then you can decide ahead of time what you want that in time, like after the game to look like, because normally calls are about 30 minutes, 45 minutes max. So you decide what you want it to look like. And again, it's all based on your preference and the speaker as well. So it's a lot of flexibility with it of what you want it to be. If you just want it to be the kids getting to practice some and ask more questions, the speakers are cool with that. If you want them to share and engage with your kids and then let them ask more questions, you can do it that way. Or if you just want to play the game, that's fine too. Like one of the speakers actually competed that we had competed in beauty pageants so that was kind of fun for the kids and then my kids were like well what's your talent and she's like well I'm a singer so then the kids asked her to sing and she sang for us so that was really cool and that wow. was another one. like there's so many highlights that we have that's happened and it's all free and that's like no one believes me when I tell them this is all free like completely free so here is what it looks like these are my darlings. They're so cute. Hopefully this will play and you guys can hear it. If not, you'll get to see it afterwards. Okay, come on internet, you can do this. Wait for it, okay. And guess my classroom does have chalkboards. I kind of think it's cute, but yeah, my building's a very old building and I still have chalkboards. So this is what it looks like. And these kids, I forget which video I put in. Okay, can you guys hear or not? No, but uh, I think if you click on share screen, it should give you the option to share the audio. Okay, so let's see. It. I'm going to stop my share and we'll mm -hmm, try it yeah. again. So let's try it again, my friends. Let's see. Share screen. Okay, just share, look for the share audio in the next window. Okay. Share. Oh, there it is. Tiny hidden box. All right, let's try this again, my friends. Okay. So here, this is my level, I think these are level two, I think. These, yeah, these are my level twos. And as you guys can see there, as you're watching it, they all have their little sheets. A couple of them, I'll pause it. A couple of them have Chromebooks. The ones who have their Chromebooks out, they're our researchers. So they're actually like looking at the up information based on the questions and kind of trying to look at maps to help them out. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to play the whole clip, but they go on there. I'll play a little more. Um, 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 uh, que vous aimez, uh, la musique classique? Okay, so they she was asking her, do you like classical music? So then she would answer back to them and they keep going in this exchange. And of course they were two, so they were a little hesitant, but they loved it. Like this was actually, and then at the end, what we always do with the speakers is we take a group selfie. I wasn't in this one. But, um, yeah, and you send them what Akash asks is that you just send him a picture too, and he documents as well. So that was them. So they loved it. And that was Hedrin. I don't remember everything about her because that was one of our first ones. Here's another one we did. And this is just a mix of my kids. But that's actually the bottom picture down here. That's one of my administrators walking in in the middle. <laughs> she loved it. Like they have actually my admin who don't even speak French tried to learn some phrases just so they could ask a question and play the game, which that made my day. Like I had yeah, that's wonderful. I, had, I didn't want to put the video up there, but it's one of my ad I have it on my phone and I'm not deleting it. It's my one admin who doesn't <laughs> speak any French. He worked with my kids, like I'm just getting emotional talking about it, but he worked with my students and had my students teach him the phrase so he could ask a question. 
And I, that was just like, that is how amazing my admin are at my building, that they will do that and sit with my kids and participate. And I am just so blessed to be yeah, there. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean, because I am also blessed with yeah. incredible administrators, you know, at the district yeah, level, absolutely. at my school. I mean, that makes just a huge difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Like, there they are. These are the three. Yeah, these are French threes. So, oh, uh, Heidi, uh, yeah. so I think we answered Samantha Page's uh, question, but she had another question. Yeah, of course. And she said, uh, how do you coordinate, manage kids asking questions? So I think with the video, we answered that very clearly. They go up to the front of the room, right? And they yep, take turns. They go up, and I usually take it by volunteer first. Like, I am like, who wants to start? Like, usually before we get on, I kind of have a predetermined order. Mm -hmm. kind of like okay like you're gonna go first like this kid wants to go first you're gonna go a second and like and if your question's already asked that first one you want to ask you have another one ready or just take it by volunteers like some of your kids might not want to go up as much some of them are going to want to be up there the whole time like your ones usually who are those kids who always participate mm -hmm. they might be the ones who always want to be up there but i open it to everyone like in my one class, I had one of my kids with special needs who was pretty quiet in class until we started doing this. Like we did a hangout, that student took the lead. It blew my mind. Like, he's just like, I'm doing it. I'm in, I wanna ask a question. I'm gonna ask a question and I'm like, you don't even speak up in class and you wanna go do this. Okay, great, go for it. And he just kind of took the lead in his class. And I was like, I'm sitting back in the back taking pictures and I'm amazed. Like they will surprise you during these things, like kids who don't Absolutely. talk. Absolutely, that, that, I mean, and that's and just kind of like, like the uh, power of bringing the community to the classroom. Yeah. Uh, I had this situation with a, a young lady in my class. She was brand new to my class and she was almost in tears after we had the food truck unit because yeah. she said, I was able to communicate with a r real Spanish speaking yeah. person and they understood me and I understood them and I was able to, I feel so accomplished. Exactly, I mean, like it's, it's so they level feel like they can do something with the language, like that they're using the real language and talking to a real person, not just their teacher. Like, And they like it because a lot of the volunteers are younger too. I mean, like this was Yannick and he was a college student. So they kind of felt like they were closer to his age. Then he started mentioning Absolutely. music. As, as, much as, as much as they love us, we're not as cool as this we're other people. Cool. <laughs> I mean, we're cool, but it's not like I do the same things that they do. Like they could right? talk about the music and everything. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And the kids would like, they would get into all these debates with them. And I'm just sitting there like, and my admin's like, what are they talking about? I'm like, they're talking about music, but I don't know who these people are they're talking about. I'm like, it's all good. So, like you can see on my chalkboards, like this is some of our brainstorm even that's going on. And yes, I have to write in chalk. It's it's a change, but I don't mind it. I've got you know what? a doctor crashing would love you. He loves to use chalkboards. I don't like chalkboards. Like I like I love my school. This is like I just finished my first year there, but I'm like, it's chalkboards. And I was like, okay. I had to figure out like, okay, I've never written in chalk. Like I wrote in chalk back in elementary school. I had to learn how to make my writing look pretty on a chalkboard. So that's just like what's going on there. We had like topics. So it's like weather, we had geography, the kids listed monuments. Like does your town have any important monuments where you live? Religion, what else did the kids say? I'm trying to read everything I put up there seasons they wanted to know about custom let's see time food languages like does your city are there more than one language spoken there like that could be a big clue sports money government let's see over on this side we said festivals clothing television like do you have tvs or not is TV big? Any famous people from your town? Population? Let's see. I'm trying to see what else I put. Flags, agriculture, transportation, things like that. But that just kind of gives you an idea and the kids move their chairs so they can all be seen. That's my principal sitting there at my desk. And they're like, literally, they're all into this. And you can kind of see there they have like their guiding questions that help them and all that's what you guys are going to get 
this one was a fun one because this one really threw the kids off because we had twins. And the twins, I will tell you, if you can get the twins, get them. They also speak Spanish. They're from Spain, but they're also French teachers. So they're a lot of fun. Yeah. And oh my gosh, they're probably one of our favorites because it really threw the kids off because A, you're getting two of them at once and they're identical. So they could switch on and off on the screen too. And like, usually they sit together, but sometimes they'd play around and one would be on and one would be off. And then you had to figure out who was who. So they're just fun. So that was a fun one we did. And they're the two who did the arts unit with my students, like made a whole presentation. I'm like, uh. I mean, with them being teachers, yes, I, I, I would imagine. And like my whole, I was like, I don't even make an art presentation this nice for my own students. Like, I'm like, okay, I'll just okay. keep this and materials this. for next year. And this is being put into my art unit because like it's the whole, they did it artists, they did it in French, but it's the whole artist of Spain. So I was like, Oh, I didn't even know God. some of these. So I'm oh like, I God. have a whole artist of Spain presentation That's done in French like now. cross curricular yeah, for Spanish like it was and French. Awesome. And I mean, it fit right into our AP unit because we were dealing with our arts unit. So I was like, this is perfect. And the kids loved it. So you can see my researchers are over there. These were more of my questioners and they got really into it. And it was great practice for my kids being AP that they could hear the different accents even with French. So I was like, this is perfect. They love it. Then here we are again. These are level twos. There's my principal again. And here we have more of our brainstorm going and like you can see with the twos, I kind of scaffolded more with the questions written out for them. Whereas the older kids, we would just list topics on the board. Also, let's see, this is just a cool little bit. We were featured in actual, like not the last issue, but the February issue. Mm -hmm. There's a little feature about my kids doing this and a feature about Akash and where the, my friend and I are the featured teachers down here and it has a little article, so you can check it out. I don't think I hyperlinked it. If you want the link, I can send the link. Okay, so in terms of technology, what do you all need? Basically, just have a computer that has a webcam and speakers, internet, of course. And then in terms of platform, that kind of becomes your preference as well as the speaker's preference. So do you want it to be a Google Meet? Do you want to use Skype? Do you use Zoom? You could use Facebook Live if you wanted, like if that works and you can do it at school, that's an option. Because it's not the kids logging on, it's just you logging on. WebEx or whatever virtual meeting platform you have, you could check with your guest speaker too to see what they use and what's available to them or what your district allows or what's not blocked by your district. For me, I used the Google Meet Hangout route because that worked really well for us because that's what we used but I also could have used Zoom if I wanted. Like Facebook also was a possibility because it wasn't blocked on my computer or Skype, but just see what the speaker has available to them and what you can use. So you might have to ask your IT what's allowed and then see what the speaker can use. And if that speaker it works doesn't work, that they don't have what you have, you just reach out to Akash and be like, hey, this person doesn't have this platform or can't use this platform, do you have someone else? And he will find you someone. So don't let a tech, like a basically a tech challenge, it doesn't mean it's the end. There will be someone else he can connect you with. So what I'm gonna give you all, and you'll get the presentation, but I will just show you I, what I, I share are. I shared the link earlier um, awesome. on the comments. So if you, if the people or audience who's watching can, Go to the comments and find at the beginning, I shared a link to the presentation, but you'll get I'm it also, again. I'm no. also going to share it um, on the document that you guys have access to where you can see the past recordings and it'll be in there as well. So this should open. There we go. I just want to make sure they open for you all. And these are in French, but there's pictures, so you can translate them into your languages. Do, do, do. And there we go, the pictures, there you go. So questions you could ask them, like, do you live in 
this hemisphere. So the north, the south, the east, the west, and the kids can plug it in. Or on this continent, do you live on an island? Okay, so direction words. Then I have like next to, in the northeast, are you north of, okay, so et cetera. So just practicing direction words. Do you have, and then talking about the land, like do you have mountains? Do you have a river, a lake, an ocean, a forest, anything like that? A national park. Is there, talking about weather, la meteo, tornadoes, earthquakes, floods, snowstorms, rain, very hot temperatures, very cold temperatures, humidity, things they might want to ask. Monuments, like do you have, and then just different places, sports. Some common things that I use to help the kids just scaffold their questions. So are you, est-ce que vous êtes, is your state, or you could change it to country. Est-ce que votre pays, is there, are there, est-ce qu'il y a? Or do you have, est-ce que vous avez, or are you in, est-ce que vous êtes dans, blah, blah, blah. So those are just some common starters. And then the kids get their question document. So the question, the answer. So is it yes or no? And then any information like to help them figure it out can go in there. And then questions, more questions that the kids, once they figure it out, if they wanna ask other questions, they could pose them there kind of, if they wanted to know more about something a speaker said, they would have that in there. And then just some guidelines I gave you all. And this one's just another question document. So this one just, it's a little bit different. Thank you so much for sharing this document, Heidi. I appreciate it. I mean, I I don't care that they're in French. I will do the work and I will, you know, change, switch mine up. And I think that for once, it's only fair. Since we always talk about, we always have our speakers are usually Spanish teachers. So I'm thrilled to have you tonight. Of course. And, and you know, that our French teachers tonight have the advantage. <laughs> So this one, very simple, very easy, like literal, easy for you guys to translate our questions, the question, and then the response, and then the guess. So you could even divide it up and say, okay, the first question goes to Mark. Mark asked the first question. Like if you wanted to divide it up by the kids and have one document, like you could have it as a Google Doc where they're all collaborating on it together. That's another possibility, especially for virtual you could do it where, okay, I type in the first question, then you assign question two to the next student, et cetera, and then they just have it that they could be working on it because you can do this virtually. Like I haven't done yes. it virtual, yes. but it'll work. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Uh, someone was asking that question if you had ever actually done hosted it virtually. No, because mm -hmm. during the spring, we weren't required to, we only could like, Ours were optional sessions that we would do in the spring. And of course, since it wasn't mandatory and since kids weren't getting graded, I had very low participation in the spring. So I was like, even if I bring someone in, I would hate to say I'm getting a guest speaker and then have it just be me and the speaker in a room. Because some of my days when it was time for my kids to show up for virtual meetings, it would be me, myself, and I sitting in a Google Meet, staring at the screen. <laughs> So I was just like, I don't want to like break the heart of a speaker who gets so excited and then have no kids show up. But 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 fall, I can totally I can totally see it done virtually. I mean, oh yeah. and, oh and, and that's why I was so thrilled because, like I said, yeah. I make it a point to bring per quarter two yeah. to three community people to my school, whether it's a mom, a parent of, mm -hmm. a, of a heritage speaker or, you know, just reach out Absolutely. like anybody just to have that interaction with my students. But I'm like, I can do it online. I can do it through Zoom. Yeah. It could be done you through Zoom. You can totally do it through Zoom. Like, this is totally doable where you just host the room, you put the speaker in there, and then you display it or do it virtual, complete virtual, where you have all your kids already in the Google Meet. And all the brainstorming can also be done online yeah. with the students ahead of time. I mean, all of it could be done ahead. You could even send them the doc and be like, okay, this is your assignment before class come with your questions when you guys log on maybe after 10 minutes put them in the breakout rooms let them practice and then after 10 minutes bring the speaker on board 
or bring the speaker on board while they're in the breakout room. So when they come back from a breakout, you have that speaker there waiting for them. And they're just kind of like, who is this mystery person? Like you can totally play it up in the virtual realm, like completely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you can turn it. And then I just gave you guys, this is the Skype, like Skype in the classroom is a great resource. Like they have all kinds of ideas too. So it's through Skype, but it's just their website is what I threw on there. So that's round one of ideas. Oh, wow. Other that's questions. <laughs> We we do have a couple of okay. questions. So we, we've had a few questions actually. We already tackle uh, if you could do it online. Uh, but uh, we had a, a person and I can't read their names right now. But let me see if I can find them. Oh, oh, uh, I use Blackboard Ultra. Do you are you familiar with Black, Blackboard Ultra? Can they use it to host no. these virtual meetings? I am not familiar with Blackboard Ultra. <laughs> The last time I used Blackboard was when I was in college. That's gonna date me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I would ask your IT how this would work, but I would mm -hmm. assume if you can invite guests into it, it probably would work, but I don't wanna say yes for sure. But I would assume if you can host people in it and host meetings, as long as you can host someone outside of your district, I would assume it would work, But check with your school's IT. Absolutely. And then, you know, we have two comments that I'm just going to um, mm -hmm. uh, address. And I know that the answer, you already went over this uh, with your examples. And the answer is always scaffold. But you might want to elaborate some more on, on that. Let's see. Uh, Reina saying students do not necessarily have had been taught vocabulary needed to ask certain questions. They just Google for translation. No, I'm, you facilitate the questions, right? right. You give the yeah. sentence. We may help more. create it. Like that document that I showed you guys, we use a lot of the questions on it to help them form it. Like it doesn't have to be very complex questions. Like they could ask, are there mountains? Like, and they see on, I'll go back to the document so you guys can see it. Here we go. And I give them the feeds. That's why we do the practice and the brainstorm to help them with that. So yeah. absolutely. Yep. So and, 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 they might yeah. not know geography words, some of them, but they see the picture like they see a picture of an ocean once it loads. Wait for it. Come on, Google. And they're going to learn all of this vocabulary yep. because exactly. it's relevant and compelling and they exactly. need it. So it's like, is there an ocean? Est-ce qu'il y a l'océan? Or do you live on an island, sur une île dans l'océan? Here they see water, they see the island, like they're gonna see the picture. And even if they don't understand it all completely, they're gonna start making those connections. Like you just use comprehensible input with them. Like that's why they had the pictures here. We scaffold it. And if they're not sure what it is, they'll ask me like, comment dit-on, how do you say? And I'll help them with it. Or qu'est-ce que c'est? What is this? Like sometimes the pictures aren't clear to them of what it's pointing to. So you can help them along. Like, but this is vocab. If they were out in the real world, they're going to need to know some of this vocabulary to get around town. Like direction words, super important. They're going to know the weather. Like my kids know weather. All of my levels know the weather. So they know that. They know a lot of the places of interest to ask. And I didn't even put all of them on here because most of them know that vocab. They get that in level one. Mm -hmm. So I don't even list it on here. But then like they're common question words. And then we have our question word charts all around my room. We have question words. They have their personal dictionaries that they just look up. Like I have my kids keep a little personal dictionary template on their Chromebook. So it's a file in Chrome. And anytime they need to look up a word, they add it to their personal dictionary. So that's been really helpful for them. Like some of them are like, well, how do I say this? I'm like, okay, you can look it up, but then it goes in your personal dictionary and anything that's in your personal dictionary, you can pull from. So that's been helpful. But I mean, you just scaffold it in there. You meet them where they are. And I will tell the mystery guest ahead of time, these will be level one students or, and I have to explain it sometimes to the speakers because they don't understand who a novice is, et cetera. So sometimes I have to tell the speakers, you're gonna to need to slow down with this class. Like, please don't go at full speed. Like they're not gonna understand you. And sometimes the audio connection sometimes makes it difficult too. So we have, and my kids know how to say, please repeat. Mine know how to say, please slow down. 
and they'll say it very politely to them. And like the kids take the lead. I usually don't say anything unless I have to intervene because I want them to run the show. I'm like, I like to be an observer during all of this. And usually I can be in the back. I'll come up to the front if needed, but the kids usually, they figure it out. The speakers are also most, all of them are really good about helping the kids kind of reformulate a question. Or if the speaker doesn't quite get what my kids are saying, they'll ask the kids to repeat or to speak louder and the kids will do it. And then the kids just feel like they feel so proud that they are actually communicating with a native not just madame who's in front of the room every day doing whatever I do, but they love it. Like, and I've had parents, like I'll get emails back like that night. Like Johnny told me all, all about the hangout and talking from a person from France and that just made his day. And then like the parents are like, this is so cool. Like we never did this when I was in French class kind of deal. And it's like, exactly. I mean, talk about, you know, if, if we are looking into the actual uh, guidelines and all the recommendations yeah. from Apple. Talk about real world experience. Yeah, real world experience. Re how real much world more real can it get within our limitations? Cultural comparisons, the interculturality, like it is all there. But if you don't want to do the first option, there's more ways you guys can do this. So this one is one that I did. I didn't do this one with native speakers, but you can. So this is using Flipgrid. So this is option two. So option two, and you can do the same premise as the mystery Skype or the Hangout, but you're going to set it up with another teacher in a class. So you would pose the questions and you respond through the Flipgrid. So I did this with my friend. We just decided to pair up our classes because he's one of my good friends. And we were looking for something to engage our kids in a different way because we were just like, okay, he's like, I need my kids to communicate more. He's like, would you mind if my kids communicated with your kids? I'm like, sure, no problem. So we came up with the idea, let's turn it into a game because the kids love games. So we made mystery, we called it Mystery Flipgrid, which I'll share our template with you all. And I'll show you what that looks like. And you'll have access to this in the presentation. And again, it is in French, but very easily adaptable. Just don't use our code because that's the hard grid. I should have taken that off, but that's what we use. So our goal, and we put it in English so the kids would understand our goal, was we were going to ask each other questions that allow us to discover the location of the other school. So then your objective, ask yes or no questions to figure out the location of the partner school before they determine ours. So how we did it was our starting assignment was Dear bonjour, say hello. And in French, you introduce yourself in a Flipgrid video, doing your best to use full sentences, answer the questions in your first video. So giving your name, your age, and describing yourself with three different adjectives. So that's what each student would make that first video, your school and my school. Then once you see the other class's videos, you're gonna pick two kids who you don't know, who don't go to your school and Basically, you're going to then record a response to their video. So don't just pick your kids. Like, don't have your students respond to the kids in their own class because that's going to defeat the purpose. And then you're going to ask them we or no questions. So yes or no questions. And then we made a list of good examples and bad examples so the kids would understand what's a good question, what's a bad question. So I'll just go over a couple of these. But do you live east of the Mississippi River? Okay, that's a good question because it's not as specific, still leaving it kind of vague. Whereas not so good, do you live in Canada? Okay, very specific. So we wanted them to kind of go a little broad with their questions. Do you live in North America? Good example. Not so good, do you live in California? Because I'm like, okay, that's going to narrow it down right away. And then do you live in a state or a country that begins with certain letters? Things like that, etc. Then once you've responded to your video, you would record, and you could use this same setup if you want this model, you could use it with the first option too. So you're gonna record your presentation in a response, to them in a response, or you can create a new video. Either way, just restate the question in your answer so we know like what question you're answering. So for example, Sally might ask, 
do you live west of the Mississippi River? Jared says, yes, I live west of the Mississippi, for example. Once you've answered, you're going to find the original video posted by whoever asked you the question and leave them a video response. So Jared, who answered Sally's question, would have to go back to Sally and find Sally's original intro and ask her a new yes or no question. So they just kept this feed going into Flipgrid. And then eventually you should narrow down your information that you can start asking more specifics. And then the second half we had them do was just start basically a general conversation with their new friends. And they just, the kids kept that going throughout COVID, which was cool. They just started back and forth conversations and now they have new friends at another school. So that was a really cool way to do that one. And, and it's, I, it's an, an, another way to bring novelty into the classroom. Exactly. And the only thing, my tip with this one that we learned the hard way was try to remind the kids when they're making their Flipgrid video, just be careful what they're like, not really be careful, but be mindful of what they're wearing. Because some of the kids, they're spirited about their schools. They love their schools. They're going to wear like their team sweatshirts from the school, et cetera. And then we realized, oh my gosh, they're going on camera with a Loudoun Valley sweatshirt on, or his school was Millbrook and they have a Millbrook sweatshirt on. And then of course our kids are smart. What did our kids do? Pull out their phone. And then they're just like, do, do, do. Google Millbrook. And then they come <laughs> to me, Madame, we know where they live already. I'm like, Oh how did goodness! You ask them a question. How did you figure this out? They're like, they were wearing a shirt that said Millbrook, so I googled it. I'm like, I just smiled at them very nicely. I'm like, okay, <laughs> thank you. How about you ask them some questions? Like, trying not to be like, oh, you lovely child, you just. Ugh. So, my tip is just. Be mindful, remind the kids like you want to play this as much of a game as possible and make it hard for the other school to figure it out. Like, don't give them the answer. Like, I even had to watch in my room, like, because I have posters for the school showing school spirit. I was kind of like, guys, you probably don't want to record over here. Like, record over there or don't record right in front of our Viking, like in the hallway. Like, don't give it away. Make them work for it. I'm like, you want to use the language and make them work for it. Don't just be so obvious that you're wearing like the school t-shirt mascot like right on your shirt. So it's so obvious. So that was the only kind of like, what did I learn from this experience? They will Google things. They mm -hmm. will what the kids wear. So that was just a little warning on that one. But that's that idea. All right. Other one. This is another cool option that a lot of people don't know exists in Flipgrid, but it's right there for you. So you can still connect them to other natives and learners of the target language through Grid Pals. And I don't know how many of you I'll know you one. I never heard of that one. All right, see, people don't know it exists, but it does, right? In Flipgrid, you have this program that what? offers educators the opportunity to connect their classes. So yeah, I'll show it to you guys. This is a blog post about it from Flipgrid, but. I'll I don't know, but please in the chat box or audience, please tell me I'm not alone. I try to stay up to date with everything for language. You're not alone. And, like, I never heard this alone. one before. I was actually working with a group of teachers from another school district this morning. They didn't know about it either. So oh, wow. you're not alone. I will confirm and I'm sure it's popping up in the chat that you're not alone. We need to spread the voice on this yeah. one. Like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Okay, so I'm now on my flip grid. Don't be alarmed at how many grids I have. Yes, I have 31 grids. I had 32 this morning. I deleted one of them <laughs> when I use them for training. But up at the top, you have your dashboard, they call it. And you have this thing that says hashtag grid pals. Some of you have probably never, ever clicked there. Nope. Nope. Negative. <laughs> you probably never clicked this one either. This is another gem. I have clicked on that one. I'm still waiting to see if they accepted my submission, but... They're a little slow right now just because of everything with the COVID and so many people putting things on there. Yeah. So it'll get there. I have a ton of mine in there. This one's probably one you guys don't click either. That's another fun yeah, one. That, that, yeah, that's a fun I, I have used that one. So. Okay. So this one's called Grid Pals. And it, you can choose whether you want your profile to show or not. I have mine as active. If you hit hidden, then you're not in view and no one can find you and connect with you. So you want to make sure yours is on active. And this is how you can connect with educators and classrooms around the world. 
So you're going to see this big map, and I'll zoom it out. And sometimes it takes it forever to populate because it's doing it in it's real time. So much. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let me wait for it. It'll populate because there's more dots. And let's see. I've shown French teachers a lot of love today. I'll give equal love to French and Spanish because I know that there's French and Spanish. So here, everywhere you see the Flipgrid plus sign, that's where there is someone who's using Flipgrid that you can connect with. So we can zoom around on the oh, world. Wow. You can also filter it if you want. So there is 28,436 people that you're available to connect with. So I could filter it if I wanted by grade level. I could filter it by subject. Or if I knew a specific teacher that I wanted to connect with, I could search for their name and it would bring me right to their pinpoint. So I am going to fly in over to France and Spain. Here we go. Let's, let's... OK, maybe not. Maybe Heidi doesn't know her geography today. <laughs> My mouse doesn't know its geography. Let's say, let's blame the mouse. Come on, zoom up. You have a mind of your own sometimes. There we go. All right, so I am just gonna click on someone here. And yes, you can see there are dots everywhere. I'm gonna try to get this, I'll get one of these dots to pop up for us. Come on. Okay, pop up, there we go. Okay, this is Christelle, and it tells us that she is a high school teacher and teaches languages, literatures, and linguistics, language arts, English language, and literature. So she's probably teaching them English, is my guess, and they're in France. So I could reach out to her. It has her social media. So she has Skype, so I could send her a message on Skype asking, could I connect my students with your students? Or you have the option here, send an invite. So it would, if I open it, it would be like, Flipgrid will send an invite to her with my email, and then we would be able to connect. I'm not gonna hit the send, but all you would have to do is hit that send button. That's very, very simple. Yeah, super simple, and then it's up to you. Like, we'll go to Spain, we'll go down. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm just gonna pick a dot, see what we get. All right, this person is Sienna. They teach elementary and art, but I mean, still, it wouldn't matter. It's a native speaker, so they have a Skype there. So you could hit them up through Skype. I'll try another one. Come on. Sometimes it's a little slow. Okay, this person is another elementary. But Monica, and again, it gives you Monica's Facebook. It also mm -hmm. gives you her invite link. If we go back over, we'll come down here into South America or even Central America. Do, 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 whoops. I'm not the best at flying us around the world. <laughs> Okay. Uh, those, those maps also don't help, you know, because the, it takes forever to load and they are slow. And once you click on it, it's ahead of you anyway. So yeah, it's kind of like doing its own thing. There we go. Let's try a dot. Okay. I'm just going to click a dot. We're going to see. Okay. Here's Andreas. He's a technology instructional coach, university college, but still, I'm sure he could connect us to someone there in his country. You could send the invite. And, and then when you're looking, you can also look for like great specific. I'm, yeah, I'm like, seeing I it. if I wanted to, I could mm -hmm. filter them by high school. And then, then it's less dots. You could also filter it. Maybe you wanted someone who was a language teacher or you want all. You could look, there's even for our sign language teachers. Wow. You can search for sign language. You can search it by literally anything. There's deaf ed, elementary, if you're an English learner. language learner. I've seen a lot of teachers who switch, uh, with, who connect yeah. with English language learners and then they speak uh, to yeah. each other. And, and you yeah. could do it, like switch it, like with my partner school, which is my next section, you can switch it like, Sometimes we do our projects in English just to let them practice, but they even have, we're all the way at the bottom is where they put world languages. Mm -hmm. Wow. The very bottom of the list, but you can search it or like if I wanted to put like my name, 
my name should come up, hopefully. It's going to be very embarrassing if my own name does not show up. Uh, come on. Go to the U.S. Oh, that's cute. There I am. There's my dot. And then there we go. And mine is very nice. Mine even connects you. So French teachers who are on, if you want my disco library, which is everything that I've shared on Flipgrid, all my topics, you can get that too. So there's my little profile, what it looks like. So that's a tip that a lot of people don't know exists on Flipgrid. Or you could do it class to class. Like if you're looking for another Spanish teacher here in the US, mm -hmm. you could do it that way too. So like I could find someone or if I wanted another French teacher. You could just kind of pick on the dots and see who's where, see where people aren't using Flipgrid. It's kind of fun. Or even with your friends. I mean, how my yeah. my best friend is moving to a different district. I can connect with her kids exactly. and my kids. Same. Or it's like you and Claudia could connect your kids. Yeah, absolutely. Or like you can connect, like just how my friend Zach and I connected our kids on the mystery one. You could connect them not in mystery and just be like, hey, you're going to have Spanish language pals in California. And they're learning just like you are learning and you guys can talk together. Like there's total options like with this. And then it just makes a grid like in your grid that's called grid pals and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Ronetta saying that she's in there too. So <laughs> yeah, you can find Ronetta. Hey, Ronetta. She's like my EF friend. She's really cool. All right. So that's that one. And that's there for you. So if you need to read about it, it's there. And this was actually the grid pal concept was actually created by a teacher. So that's the cool part. That's amazing. Because she wanted her kids to have pen pals. So that's how it was formed. And the last segment that I do, and this is like my passion, is I actually have a school to school partnership. So connecting our students to native speakers of the target language. And I have a whole other presentation on it. And you guys can click that link and that takes you there, which is the full version because I gave you the abbreviated in this, basically. So mine actually began back in 2012, and I'm partnered with Nico, so Nicolas, Nicolas Uper, who is at the Lycée Bazin, and he's a math teacher. I'm a French teacher. It works, like, and I hate math, but we were partnered together. I think most of our language teachers hate math, but I don't want to make it a generalization, but no. just from what I've heard. Yeah, like, we're just not math brained for the most part. And he is, but we're both super techie. This was like, that picture is the very first time we met. Like he came to my school. It's one of our old pictures. This is more current over here, but we do things together all the time. So we've done so many projects over the years. Like we've done Google Hangouts like with each other. Oh, I made a typo there, I'll have to fix that. We've done projects, collaborative projects over Google Drive. We've done flip grids. We've done virtual reality together. His kids have made my students videos because back in my old district, the videos that went with our textbook were so old and ancient. They were the same ones I learned off of. So his kids actually redid some of the videos for us to make it more modern. And we also, way back, we did a program called Quiz Revolution. It was like making our own Jeopardy, but now that site doesn't even exist, but it did back then. Mm -hmm. So those are just some ideas we did. My kids and his kids, actually, we won a Flipgrid contest with our App Smash project we did through Flipgrid, which I'm giving a webinar on it tomorrow. So I'll just throw that out as a little advertisement. So tomorrow, where, where, can, where can we find the webinar registration? I can probably, let's see, I can't throw it in the chat. It's on my Facebook page. You can you can come back and it's on my Twitter. And like, yeah, you can, yeah, you can put it back in the chat when we get off of this. Mm -hmm. I can put it in there, but it's tomorrow. You'll learn how we did our whole app smash where we took Google My Maps, Flipgrid, Screencastify, and we did virtual town tours. Like, oh my gosh, it's so cool. Like, wow. It is literally one of our coolest projects because the kids are taking them literally. I'll just go there. We're going down this rabbit hole, my friends. I mentioned it. We're going there. All right. So blah, blah, blah. Come on. Scroll. Do, 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 do. Which one is this? That's not where I want to be. It's another one. Do, 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 ma ville. Ma ville. There it is. 
Okay, so basically they had to show their town and I'll just go to, we can just watch just the one I like to highlight. There it is, a model. So Tony Cole, Elsie Pell Skyline, so Tony Pony Cole America. Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. So, magazine, il s'appelle CBS. So, un petit magazine. Okay, and she keeps going. These are level ones, by the way. So, these are French ones doing tours of their town. And then the French kids reply back. Hi. Um, je m'appelle Hugo. Uh, je dis Alia. Et je vais uh, au lycée François Bazin. Um, so I'm Hugo Bonhomme. I live to I live in Gare, and uh, I will go to Bazin High School. Um, my town, no, uh, my village is very beautiful. Um, and he keeps describing it. And the nice thing is, they do theirs sometimes in English because mm -hmm. they're learning English. Yeah, but then they'll also do it in French. Yeah, question, go for it. it. No, it's an opportunity for them to practice, and I just love exactly. the whole. You yeah. know, like you said, interculturality aspect it's of it all. all. It's, it's and amazing. the kids, the French kids, would then do the same thing. Like they make the map, and then Bonjour, my kids would respond. Je présente mon village qui s'appelle Rouvroy sur Audrey. So they get to hear different French accents. They see the town. Like I loved it because the kids would put in the pictures. So not only are my kids hearing the target language from someone else, they are hearing it from a native, they're getting to see the town and how it's different and their own. Like, ah, oh, there's so much possibility with this. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing and that's all, like, that's my partner school there. Amazingness. Okay, let me go. Other projects, I've linked like a whole presentation there. What else we've done, it's all linked there. Those are just the kids, they're awesome. This is one of my kids who talks about it, like, I'm actually going to let you watch part of this because he's one of my favorites. I was so blessed to house two of Nicolas' students. I have learned. Oh no, that's sad. Come on, play. You can play. Oh dear. Okay, well. So much there we about go. Their personalities, culture, and humor. The students have been very polite, generous, and forgiving. I feel much better. Oh, that's sad. Oops, that was my fault. Oops. Well, he keeps going, and basically this was when, you can watch it on your own, because if I watch the whole thing, I will probably cry. And I don't want to cry on camera. <laughs> it was like, this was when the students actually came to our school, and my students were making videos about what the partnership meant, and we actually presented this at the school board. So this was one of my best kids. I'm not going to cry fighting it. He is actually a student with special needs and was told he could not learn a language. And I said, oh, yes, he can. And he became my top student. And to see him go and give this speech and present at the school board, like, oh, my God. Like, it was just one of those moments. He's incredible. That, that is so powerful. Yeah. So just watch this. When anyone says, like, a student can't learn a language, go back and watch this video because he is he's amazing. He's now graduated. He went on to art school. He's planning once it's safe to go to Paris and do art. Like he is just an amazing kid. So that's Alex. He's awesome. And he knows I share that video all the time. His parents like they love it that I highlight him all the time. Like because of he course French class changed his life. Like and, and he like, like had I said, never I mean, hosted students. Like when he volunteered, I was just like, oh boy, he doesn't have siblings. He's never had this social experience and he took on two of them. And it was literally, I quote his mother, it was life changing to have that experience and have two kids basically living with him for over a week. And oh, that was that was one of the highlights of my career. So I'm gonna, before we get to questions, I'm just gonna put this quote up here because this is kind of how I end any presentation I do with global collaboration. and. Feel free to share this quote because I love it. It's one of my faves. Just as you navigate through the rest of your life, be open to collaboration. Other people and other people's ideas are often better than your own. Find a group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them and it will change your life.
that's from Amy Poehler that was in one of her graduation speeches. And I just love that quote because it just summarizes like the power of collaboration. Like we truly are better together. Collaboration is so much better for our students, just getting that opportunity to connect, to become global citizens. Like there's so many ways to do it and we can do it virtually. Uh, yes, yes. I, I mean, yes to everything you just yeah. said, Heidi. I mean, absolutely, yes. I cannot emphasize it enough. I always, when I, I have a presentation that I do about relationships, and I said, yes, we're going to focus on, on student relationships. Yeah. And yesterday in Claudia's group, I was saying, yes, we're yeah. going to open it this year with parent relationships. Yeah, that's but it's totally so different. Like, oh. but it's, it's bigger than that. It's the relationships exactly. you have with your coworkers in your exactly. building how they can then, contribute to your class with yeah. your administration that is that sees your yeah. vision and your passion as a world language yeah. teacher with the community, whether it's, you know, outside and we're bringing it or whether this year we have to do it virtually. And that's why I exactly. said too, that, you know, we are teachers, but we, we are not just a teacher. We are right. amazing teachers. Exactly. And, you know, it is, it's, it's in our nature. Like we thrive, yeah. we thrive. doesn't matter yeah. what is thrown at us. We I'm just like, throw it at me. I will find a way to deal with find it. A solution. I'm like, I will teach on a boat. I will teach through Zoom. Whatever you all need me to do, I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a way to make this work for the kids. Like, and you can do this. Like, you can still bring the people in. Yes. You don't have to just, like. You can build the relationships with exactly. the students. You can and build these, the relationship with the parents. Like, and the guest speakers. Like, you could even invite the parents to come into the Zoom when you do it. Like, let them see their kids in action. Talk like, about that. That's an amazing uh, Like, situation. this is an opportunity, like, you might not normally have in the school year because the parents are working in their office buildings. But now so many parents are working from home. They could come and participate. Like, there are so, I see almost more possibilities doing it this way. Like, I am totally excited and getting new ideas. Just Yeah, me too. I am super excited. And you just brought so much more excitement tonight with your ideas and and into integrating the community and the global community. And I mean, you titled the session so well, like making the Thank global you. connection. I mean, it's we are just so thrilled. Um, Adam, I don't think anybody had any questions, but I want to make sure I give people the chance if they yeah, have so any anything you guys want to ask seriously anything about it about partnerships about the mystery hangouts anything like don't be shy like ask anything anything is a good question and we'll give you guys a second or two because i know there's a delay with Streamyard. Yep, there is always a, a delay uh samantha was asking if you were getting do you need to get any parent permissions lips or flip grid and i responded and i said you know always check with it goes back to yeah. checking with your check with your school district like i know with my district yes we need parent permission for the apps but again, like Bertha said, check with your districts. That's the biggest thing. Like it depends on your district's rules. And I can't say what every district is. I know in my district, we have the beauty. We have this thing called permission click. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, every <laughs> district should have it. It's awesome. You literally just fill out the template and it'll auto send it to the parents and they just have to click a box. I don't have to collect paper anymore. It's lovely. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> such a cool thing. Like you just send it out cha -cha 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 -cha, and it just sends to all the parents. It collects all the responses wow. and I just log back into it and can look and half the time since it's coming to the parents as an email, I'm going to admit they don't read what it says. They just click. Yes. My kid has permission. Yeah. Most of them do, but you know, some of them yeah. will, will read it. So <laughs> most of them don't read it. it and they just say yes. Yeah. Or uh, we have like, yeah, it's easy. We have uh, Rebecca who said she had a mom help her son with his virtual Spanish tour of the house last year, and it was a beautiful moment. Yeah. Great advice to include parents. Yes, in every yes. opportunity you have Any to do opportunity, that. Like, let them come in. Like, I let them, I told them, like, when we were doing our optional virtual meetings in the spring, I would send, like, of course, the reminders to the kids, but then I would also send a remind out to the parents saying, if any of you would like to join us, and learn some French, please come and join. I had one parent show up one time with their kid because their kid wasn't coming to class. So mm -hmm. the, I, the parent made it more punishment for the kid, but <laughs> it actually turned out fun because the parents like, I learned. And the, the kid was just sitting there like with this scowl on his face, like I am so embarrassed right now because mom is sitting in my session with me. 
And I'm like, hey, but mom got to see what we do in French class and mom really liked it. And then you bet Johnny was at that next one. Like that kid was there. He was all in. And we have a couple of questions that did come in. Okay, all so right. Mary is asking for the mystery hangout. How long does it take to get a match? Um, I'm not gonna lie. Akash, if you message him tonight, you'll probably have an email tonight from him. <laughs> it does not take long. Like seriously, he's kind of like me. He's like an energizer bunny. I don't think he sleeps. <laughs> like seriously, like he will send me texts at all hours sometimes. He'll be like, hey, I it's like 2 a.m. in the morning. I found you a match. Can you do one this week? Can or you do one tomorrow? Well, school doesn't start until two weeks or anything. No, but he'll find, like, he is very responsive. And he'll even give you his cell phone number so you can text him, too. Like, if something is coming up and, like, you're not hearing back from the speaker, like, he gave you the email, but you don't hear back, you can just send him a message. Hey, I haven't heard from this person. Like, are you sure the email is right or can you reach out to them or see if they're okay or maybe like your school's email it got caught in the spam filter not gonna lie that happened one time with mine like their email got trapped in my spam filter it wasn't that they weren't responding i just didn't know they were in the junk folder it happens it happens it happens like it's life so that's why we should make it a habit to check the spam folder too i mean i made yeah. it a habit so every yeah, time like i check it more now because i learned my new district a lot more gets sent to spam than my old district did so it's like oh even emails from ap central were going in spam right that's kind of a problem that but no a like he is super responsive so okay we, we have literally a plan it uh, and Samantha is asking if you have any suggestions for interpersonal writing, like pen pulse in writing or, or something like that, that you may know about. Like suggestions for finding one or suggestions of how to facilitate it. I don't know which one. I'm, I'm guessing she's uh, talking about finding one. Like you could do it still through the Flipgrid, through e like through Grid Pals and connect with someone that way. And just, you could also manage that as a writing part, like with okay. my partner school that I have in France, we do writing things too. Like the kids email back and forth. It's not just all talking. We do interpersonal too. Sounds awesome. And then we have a, a question. Um, are they, are the mystery speakers usually teenagers or could they be adults? They're adults. Like we've had adults, like some are college age. So I don't consider college age people like teenagers. Like they've all been like, most of the ones we've had are in their twenties and older. So yes, you'll get a variety and you could kind of, it just depends on the availability, but he has like hundreds of volunteers. More for Spanish than other languages because Spanish is his background as well. But there's, I'm pretty sure from my friend, my Spanish colleague who's used them, it's a variety. Just depends on who's available when and like what time your classes are. And I don't even know yet the schedule for my classes for this coming year. So I'm like, I still have to figure out how this is going to work because we don't know our schedules and we're virtual, but we don't know if we see our kids every day. So my key is just be flexible and I'm going to take whoever's available. And if I have kids at that time, we'll do it. Yeah. Or just, the kids might even, if your schedule is pretty flexible, they might even be willing to just jump in if you tell the kids, hey, I have a surprise for you at this day at this time. Like if your district's not as structured with it, the kids might want something that's different. Yep. What I else? Mean, that was that novelty aspect of it. Exactly. Oh, I think that is it. Uh, um, we had a question about the presentation. I shared the link. So the link was shared three times throughout the presentation. And there it is. I'll put it up and again. And there is a the uh, 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 smaller link, and you can access it. However, I also shared just now a comment. Uh, if you guys want to get the growing list of all the presentations in one place, and you can share those links uh, with your admin if you want to present to them, you know, um, an idea or something, you can do so. Uh, you can access that link through this link. Uh, you can you can get request request access to the link through this link that I just share. Uh, Mary saying, uh, okay, hold, no, she was answering. And then uh, Samantha was asking again about asking admin permission. Again, uh, Samantha, I think every school is gonna have a different rule and is this always safe? We want to keep our jobs ultimately. 
So it is always safe uh, and best practice to reach out to your admin. Even for me, I know my admins are going to be fine with everything that I do, but I still need to run it through them before I do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I will probably send my admin, in my case, an email. Hey, you know, I learned about this and I'm going to try it. Uh, is there anyone else I would need to contact? Anything else you think I should consider? This is my plan. So yeah. for me, every time you come to your admin, don't go to your admin with a question. Go to them with an idea and a solution and, and like think ahead. And that way, you know, they'll just, you know, run through the information. Doesn't matter how busy they are, and they'll say, "Oh, go ahead," or yep. maybe, "Have you thought about this?" this or and "Have you talked to this person?" Okay. And so, like mine have been, they're just like my response was, "Can we participate?" And I was like, "Absolutely!" And then they did it once, and then they're like, "Can we come back the next time?" I'm like, "Um, of course." So literally, they just have me whenever I do them. They have me set up calendar invites now for them every time we do one. And one of them always comes just because they love it so much. It's not that they don't. It's like they want to be there and they don't want to miss it. So mm -hmm. I just do calendars every time. It's like, okay, we're doing a mystery hangout. And I just put it on their calendars and they pop in because they're like, this is better than walking around the building or answering emails and calls. So they like to get involved and I like it that they like to be involved. So that's another way you could just be like, I'm going to do this and I would love it if you can attend. Like Absolutely. open your door to them, open it to the school board members, like especially mm -hmm. if I you're mean, they program, want to like, it's a I great mean, thing. This is the kind of stuff they want to highlight right now anyway. Yeah. Like that right. how, you know, I mean, we want to highlight what we're able to make happen through, through exactly. this. Exactly. Um, because ultimately we want to make sure our students are connected to, to the target culture. Um, it, it, that's what we want to see. So definitely I'm, I'm all about that, Heidi, about letting know your board what's happening. If you don't let your board know what's happening, they're not going to find out more than likely. And I know that a lot of the teachers who are watching us tonight do wonderful stuff in their classroom. Yeah. So, you know, speak up and don't be afraid yeah, tell to tell your and story. Speak. Yeah. It's like one of my friends, it was some PD we were in and someone said, if you're not telling your story, then who is? Tell your story of your classroom, like share what you're doing, put it out there, put yourself out there, put the kids out there, let the kids tell the story, like let everyone see what you're doing. Yeah, I, I, and, and that's, uh, we do that in my school. I do that, my principal does that through social media. I also have a teacher mm -hmm. social media account. And that's, and the kids, that's their language. That's the yeah. language of this generation too. And the parents, the same, like the parents want to see their kids like on our school's Twitter feed. Like, like my principal, when she comes in, she'll video it. And then they put it out on our Valley Twitter. And it's like the parents have already signed the approval that the kids can be on the Valley Twitter. They want to see their kids. So then they can brag of, look, my kid was featured in the Valley Twitter and da, da, da. And then they share it. And then more people find out about it. And it's just awesome how it snowballs. Like, it's really cool. Absolutely. And we have final comments. So just uh, merci, mm -hmm. uh, Heidi. Of and course. Mary saying thanks so much. Uh, that we are wonderful. And um, we have Facebook user. <laughs> uh, says, uh, thank you for this valuable and insightful presentation. Uh, well, thank, thank you for, for facilitating this much needed webinar. Absolutely. Okay. And then, you know, we have just a lot of thank you. So thank you so You're much. You're welcome. I'll stop I, sharing so I can see you people. Like, so I'm not looking at my rainbow pretty background anymore. There we so, go. Now I can see people. Yay. And they, I mean, definitely uh, telling the story. So we want to challenge you to find ways to tell your story. Make sure, obviously, always check with your admins because, you know, I know some schools are a little bit more strict with social media guidelines, mm -hmm. but definitely if, you know, if at all can be done, you can create a, a document for your parents to let them know yeah. you're going to highlight the students uh, and do it and do it and, and share your successes from the class. So Absolutely. thank you so much, Heidi, for your time. I mean, we're really here for a while today, but your willingness and um and I look forward to to learning more from you, Heidi, because I know Absolutely. my district is going to have you pretty soon. So I'm so excited about that. Yay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. And Bye, reach out everybody. with any questions.